Hi, how are you? Matt Watson here from CarWow. So I'm sat in an Audi RS e-tron GT and next to me is an Audi RS3 and next to that is an Audi RS6 and we're going to have a drag race up an indoor ski slope because I want to compare how well these different four-wheel drive systems from Audi do on low grip situations such as snow. So we've got an electric four-wheel drive system, you've got a Haldex four-wheel drive system in the RS3 and a good old-fashioned proper quattro four-wheel drive system in the Audi RS6. Now let me tell you about this RS e-tron GT. It's got two electric motors and combined they've put out 646 horsepower and 830 newton meters of torque on the front axle, one on the rear axle, so you've got all-wheel drive. This is quite a heavy car because of all the batteries and stuff, so it weighs in at 2,345 kilograms and it's quite expensive as well. Starts from 115,000 pounds. Now let's find out about the RS3. Hello Nick, how are you doing? Hi Matt, I'm doing very well. I'm a bit cold to be honest. Nothing a heated seat can't fix. Exactly. I've got my temperature up to 22, my heated seat on, my big jacket on as well. It's actually quite warm outside but it's freezing in here. Anyhow, tell me about your car's stats. It has a two and a half litre, five cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. It puts out 400 horsepower, 500 newton meters of torque, puts all that through a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox with a clever clutch pack that can send up to 50% of all of that power to the rear wheels. Then there's a nifty little electronic limited slip differential, which can send up to 100% of that power to either rear wheel, depending on which one has the most grip. Basically that car has its engine like across the way like that it's called transverse and it has a Haldex all-wheel drive system which can only send a maximum of 50% of the power to the rear wheels when the front start to slip. How much does that thing weigh and how much does it cost? It weighs 1,570 kilograms and it costs a smidge over 55,000 pounds. A lot cheaper than this though and a lot lighter. Anyway let's find out about the RS6 and I'll go over to the new German CarWow YouTube presenter Daniel. Hey Daniel, you all right? As happy as can be. Why is that? Do you think you've got the best car for the job? I would like to think so. I have a four liter V8 that has 600 horsepower, 800 newton meters of torque. This is going through a eight speed automatic gearbox. Also a quite clever differential that is able to send up to 100% of this power to the rear. And I have an electronically controlled mechanical locking differential at the rear. And the car weighs 2,075 kilograms. And how much does it cost? It costs 100,000 pounds. The RS6 has its engine mounted lengthways, which is better. Anyway, let's race, let's see what happens. Oh, before we do, if you're thinking about selling your car and you need to find out how much it's really worth, just click on the pop-out banner up there, I'll put the link in the description below to get a car wow. Just upload some photos, give a brief description, then our dealers will bid on your car. And if you want to, you can sell it to the highest bidder and it's completely free. Go check it out. If you want to do that at a later date, just simply Google help me car wow and then my team will help you choose your idea of car and change into it by selling your car and getting a great deal on your next car. Anyway, let's race. Buy, sell, car, wow. Now before we race, we're going to do the obligatory car wow sound check. So I'm going to start off with the RS6. So let's have a listen to the RS6. Go rev it up. Now I can hear it echoing in the snow dome, but there is a soft limiter. So how many revs is your soft limiter coming in at, Daniel? It's coming in at about three and a half thousand. Okay, so let's rev up the RS3 and experience some more soft limiterage. All right, RS3, so what was your soft limiter coming in at? About 3,800. Yeah, well, my car doesn't even make a noise. Well, it does when you're driving, it goes, Whoa, it makes some, like, futuristic noises. So we're going to do the thing that we normally do with car wow, is the editor's just going to make some funny electric car sounds for the electric car. <coughs> There we go. This sounded the best, didn't it? Now we're going to race. And if you like drag races and you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. Three, two, one. Oh, loads of traction. We're on Pirelli P0s. Whoa. No. Whoa. That was just mental. The way this got off the line, the winter tires just bit in and it just rocketed off. I cannot believe that. I actually got a bit of air over the bump. I won that. I'm not sure what happened for second place. Who came second, RS3? It definitely wasn't me. I bogged down at first, slid over to the right, got some grip, slid over to the left, and RS6 had me. 
I felt like we were head ahead a little bit, the RS3 and me, and then the power came in. So we had stability control on that time. Shall we dare to try with it off? I think what the audience wants is less stability, definitely. Right, what we're going to do now is drive at the slopes with the stability control off. And we're going to just control them, see how they do. We're going to start on a slope, which is a bit harder than when we just launched. And we're going to see how they find traction. And then we're going to stop halfway, regroup, and then go to the steeper slope section and see how they do there as well. Three, two, one. The RS6 is trying to go quickly. Ah, easy. First of all to you, RS3, you look like you struggled a little bit. It did at first, and then once the wheels slipped and gripped, then it was very undramatic. A bit like driving on a road, to be honest. RS6, you just shot off. You think we were drag racing again or something? It just seemed to just grip and go. Yeah, it felt like it had a lot of traction. I didn't really have to feather anything. This is as easy as going up in a ski lift. Yeah, okay, what we're going to do now is go to a steeper section of slope. I'm going to head out first and see how this car can just grip on a slightly steeper, more awkward section. And then I'm going to find a section of the slope which is so angled or steep that this can't deal with. There might not be one. There might be one. We'll find out. Let's do it. Okay. So if I try and start here, it's quite steep. So I'm going to stop on this slope, which would be a very bad thing to do in reality. You don't want to keep momentum up, but I've just been an idiot. Can I get going? Stability is off. It's all down to the car just gripping. I mean, this is just too easy. Let's see if I can stop here and go again. I think my weight might be helping me. too easy let's make it a bit harder this is really tricky can I get at this look at that it's just crazy I can just drive around as I like of it it's like a mountain goat I'm gonna try the very tight corner see if it can do that if it does that it's amazing so this is all sorts of badness I'm on a side slope steep gradient will it do it Oh, bombed out a bit, but it held itself up. Oh. This thing is insane. I think the electric motors are just able to deliver the power as and when you need them. I think something fell off the car there. Let's find out what that was. I think we've just lost a drain plug for the sill, but that's all, nothing too serious. Anyway. Let's try the next car. Okay, now let's see how traditional Quattro all-wheel drive system does with stability control all the way off. Go for it. Easy. No problem. That was too easy, Daniel. I think you're gonna have to go straight on to the next challenge, which is at the side bit. Super easy here. So how was that, Daniel? Was that just easy? Very easy. This car is completely underwhelmed by this. Okay then, Daniel, let's see if you can do the really trick one round the corner. Yeah, that's not going to help. I can just see your front wheel spinning and the rears aren't. Yeah, it has no chance. Your car was somehow magical. This one has to give up. I'm surprised, you know. Normal Quattro is brilliant at laying down the power, but it just goes to show for all the naysayers about electric power, it's just so good at putting power down where it needs it, not moving things around from a single power source. You have the power source for each axle, and on some cars, you have a power source for each wheel. They don't sound good though, right? So before we set the RS3 off, Daniel, do you think he's going to get up there? I think this one, certainly. I mean, it has great traction because the engine is over the front axle to some extent, so this should help. Didn't help you. Your front wheels were spinning a moment ago and your engine is heavier than his. Go on then, RS3. Let's see what you got. Are we spinning? No, we're not. made it but it didn't look the easiest in there Nick. There was more slip than I was hoping for but it did it. Okay let's see if you can do the next one. I'm thinking perhaps no. There 
Ah, yeah, it is slippery. Still doing it. Yeah, he got a bit of slip there and it looked like, oh, maybe not, but he managed to. Uh, it's done everything the RS6 has done so far. Let's give it the final test, shall we? I'll tell you what though, Daniel, I'm pretty sure that the RS3 didn't do those challenges quite as well as the RS6. What do you reckon? I agree, but I think he also made it. The result is what matters, I guess. But what do you reckon? He's never going to do this, right? No, he probably won't move. Can't even get into position. <laughs> You're not starting from as high up as me, but I'll let you off. Go on, let's see what you can do. See if you can even move forward at all. Let's try one more time. Not allowed. <laughs> Audi says no. What's happening on his rear axle, Daniel? Nope, there's nothing happening in the rear axle. So much for 50% of the power being sent to the rear, it's not, is it? I think we might have needed more than 50% anyway on this slope. Tell you the truth though, with the RS6 as well, all the power was pretty much going through the front and just being spun away. It wasn't driving from the rear. It was only this one that managed to drive from the rear because it's just got a motor at the rear, which takes care of that, regardless of what the front is doing. Well, I think we learned from this that four wheel drive in an electric car is better than a traditional Audi Quattro system with a center mounted diff, is better than a Haldex system with a front mounted diff front wheel drive shenanigans. There we go. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Click on those windows there for some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can find out how much your car is really worth through CarWow. Thanks for watching.